Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a short little video that accompanies my blog, which is frankholzman.blogspot.com. So if you're looking at this video, you may also want to check out my blog uh, because there's a lot more information. This is just more of a, a an overview of what's in the blog. Uh, because of the COVID virus, there's a lot more interest these days in people wanting to garden and and be connected with nature, which is a very good thing. It's a wonderful thing, actually, because uh, if we were more connected with nature and we were incorporated our lifestyles to embrace nature, I don't think we'd have things like viruses. We'd be designing and, and our priorities would be different. Uh, anyway, that's a long topic in itself. but. Uh, with this interest in gardening and, and, and connecting out their doors with nature, uh, there's a lot of people who are also promoting theirs, themselves and their little workshops and their, their information blogs and so on and so forth. I see a lot of workshops out there and they're taught by people who have been gardening for a long time, for a short while or a long while. I don't know. I try to look up, see who some of them are and try to connect with them. Uh, but I see a lot of them promoting themselves as experts and that they kind of know it all. Uh, I don't know it all. I'll never know it all. Uh, I've been gardening at this place for over 10 years and prior to that I worked in a variety of different places in different countries and different environments for over 35 years and the last thing I want to be is an expert and I'm always going to learn. I can make mistakes with the best of them. Uh, so we're always we're all learning and we're all developing and more so what I'm sharing is is my passion and my insights uh, I get some I get, I've gotten some uh, negative feedback about my book that I had published a couple years ago because it wasn't about as so much about how to grow food and how to treat a piece of land it wasn't a guide and uh, it wasn't meant to be I don't want to do that. I mean, if people want to learn how to do that and they want to learn how to do that stuff with me, then they need to come out here and work with me. It's as simple as that. I mean, you're not going to learn that much from a book. A book is, is like like the academic education that a lot of us got. It's, it's linear. It's one-dimensional. And it doesn't teach you really why things work. It teaches you how. And why you do things is very fundamental to how. If you don't know why you're doing it, then you really don't have a grasp on what how is and what how how things actually do work. Because how things work is it's like nature itself. It's it's multidimensional, and there are many p components to why things work the way they do. And nature is vast and amazing, and there, and it's 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 it goes so deep. There's so much involved in the science of nature and, and there's so much beauty in the art of nature uh, that you'll never learn it all. And that's pretty, that's pretty neat in itself, which means I can just continue learning as long as I'm here. And I love doing that. And, I, and so my book wasn't about how, it was, it was more about why. Because you don't really have a firm, like I said, you don't have a firm grasp on how things work if you don't know why they do the way they do. So with that, uh, you know, and with what, that's, that's the, the main focus for what I'm trying to do, especially with my nonprofit and stuff, is to connect people with nature. I mean, with the tree, for instance, with the trees we planted last year, uh, the information I gathered was that there was about approximately 18,000 acres cut down in Georgia. Some of that was probably commercial, a lot of that probably was. But a lot of it was just development as well. And so I plant 20,000 trees. That's like approximately a tree per acre. So I wasn't, I wasn't trying to replant all the damage that was done. That's not the objective, and you can never do that. What I was trying to do was to connect people with a piece of land, to sh demonstrate to people and show them ways to regenerate a piece of land in the process of doing it. So uh, hopefully I did that. Hopefully we, we got people connected with land and inspired them to do more of this kind of work. And because the idea is to get people to become good caretakers of the earth. 
and uh, learn how to grow their food. And, and I see a lot of people reinventing the wheel, kind of going out and abusing a piece of land because they say, oh, I'm a farmer now. I know how to do this, you know, because because I got a piece of land. And so therefore that allows them, gives them an opportunity to, to do abusive work, which really isn't necessary because a lot of us reinvented the wheel back in the 70s and 80s. And so it's not necessary to abuse land in order to learn. Uh, there's some real, but yet at the same time, we do learn. So what I, for myself personally, I learned the basics so I wouldn't have to make fundamental mistakes, but I still made educated mistakes. And, but by applying the things I learned, I advanced my learning. So it, I hope that makes sense to you, uh, to start learning on a more advanced level, how to work with land and how to, and you become part of the land. In other words, like the land teaches you, but you don't have to, you don't have to go back to square one either. You don't have to cut down all the trees, and I've seen people do that, and clear a piece of land so they could farm it. And there's plenty of open land. There's plenty of land. Look at all the land around here. There's a 26 acre hay field across the street over there. And that could all be grown for food, but it's grown for hay. And the people who do it, it works for them financially. And, uh, and with this small piece of land we have here, which is just four acres, uh, we're, we're developing and doing things, but my whole focus is, is to expand and enhance the life of this piece of land. So I'm, and, and in the process of doing so, I'm creating a balanced ecosystem. It's never totally there. It'll never be there but it's getting better and better all the time and and that i'm open to the and i've learned how to be receptive to what te nature has to teach me and i don't have to go in and destroy the place in order to figure it out uh because like i said i had a lot of history before i came here so uh basically with all that edgy just keep in mind that education is a development we all learn from each other and hopefully we we to find our little communities and our little niches to where we can work with each other and support each other in our learning and develop those those very beautiful skills and those beautiful insights because connecting with nature and working with a piece of land and finding out your role here on the planet as a caretaker for me it makes a person more whole and I think that's the objective in life not to be fragmented uh, because even with this interest in, in growing food, people are still more connected with the internet than they are with land or where they are with nature. And they know a whole lot more about computers than I do, yet it doesn't provide them with any food. It doesn't provide them with a, with a real clear insight or a deep connection with the earth. Computers won't do that and books won't do that. Uh, you need to do it, but you don't need to. In other words, you, you won't do it that way, and you won't do it by just going out. You need to find a good source of, of guidance, and you know, so you can learn the fundamentals. And then you learn, then you take those, that basic framework, and you develop on top of that. So hopefully that makes sense. I mean, I hope it does. Uh, anyway, go to my blog, Frank Holzman blogspot.com and uh, you can check out the other blogs I have I have a lot of I've been doing this since the book came out so it's been a couple years of blogs so and I was doing them every month now I'm not doing them quite as much but uh, and I am thinking about doing some more kind of guide oriented stuff about how to dig a bed and how to prep a bed and how to plant a bed and things like that workshop related stuff uh i don't know i'm kind of back and forth with that whether i want to go in that direction i think people are more receptive to that but uh i still just like the idea of of offering insights and perspectives and that's what my book is so hopefully you enjoyed this uh again check out my blog site spot frankholzman.blogspot.com and uh, you can leave comments, you can contact me, tell me what you think. 
Uh, we're looking to do more tree planting programs. Right now I'm looking at doing some projects in South America uh, because I find the people down there are more receptive to the work I do. Uh, but I don't know that I can get down there and I don't know if it's safe to go down there with the COVID virus. So that's kind of, I'm waiting to see if that's going to happen. I'm, I'm connecting with groups, but I'm apprehensive about going down to the, you know, until things feel a lot safer with the COVID virus. So I'm also looking at, you know, the possibility of doing more tree planting projects in different parts of the United States. I know there's a lot of groups doing stuff. Uh, so maybe I can support them. Or if you know of groups, you can contact me and let me know. If you're connected with a group that's doing stuff to regenerate a piece of land uh, and you'd like some additional support, I have different kinds of support I can offer uh, through my nonprofit. So anyway, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Uh, connect with the earth a little bit more. Support your community. And uh, thanks for listening, be well.